Gibson always uh, like to refer to you as many other people. And we are here this weekend at the Elkhart Lake Vintage Festival. You are our featured guest this weekend, and I know there's a lot of race fans out there this weekend that want to know about the Cannonball Run. Now, not most everybody knows about Brock Yates and, and Gurney in a Ferrari Daytona, but you drove a Chevy van in the Cannonball. No, the the, uh, the Polish racing drivers of America decided that uh, they were going to go and compete and win overall to, by going uh, non-stop in a Chevy van with five. 55 gallon drums of 110 octane fuel uh, strapped inside the van, plus the, the extended tanks that the van came with. So it was a, a special van, but it was a window van. Uh, so you could see into it. Uh, we had a bunk on top of the uh, 55 gallon uh, drums of fuel, and uh, we have a porta potty in the back and a little flap door that door opened up and dumped on the highway. And uh, so we. We were pretty well thought uh, along the way, but of course sponsored by a lot of Polish food and so forth, and you know that we had a lot of dumping going on. So, well, tell us a little bit about the experience of being on the road. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a comfortable ride in the van, but still, this is a this is a race that went from point A to point B initially. Uh, you know, with Brock Gates and a Ferrari Daytona with uh, with Dan Gurney, but with the van, how was the ride from coast to coast? Well, it is, we, we started downtown New York, uh, the Red Ball Garage, and uh, of course we t uh, had a punch card that we did into a timer, and off we did. Of course, being the PRDA, uh, we had the pole position, so uh, we were first <laughs> off, uh, poles on a pole, so uh, this was, uh, our run was going to be like, you know, maybe a conservative 75 miles an hour or something like that along the way, and, and we would go nonstop. And uh, that went well until we got to Indy. And when we got to Indy, we got lost. You know, those are the days before GPS and everything else. So we made a right hand turn at Indy. And everybody knows you have to turn left in Indy. <laughs> so it was, it, it was uh, we lost about 20 minutes there. And so we're heading down uh, across the country and uh, came into the Southwest uh, deserts at night. And we came across the car and driver van. Uh, ahead of us, and we said, "How did that happen?" We started on the pole, and they said, "Well, we made that wrong turn in Indy." So uh, we started racing, and uh, speeds of excess of 115 miles an hour at night uh, across the uh, desert southwest. And uh, you know, eventually they had to stop for fuel, and we just kept going. And we got to the California border, and we said, "You know what? We used a lot of fuel in that process, so we better put." A, put a quick uh, dump of fuel of maybe 20 gallons or so in there and before we get to the Portofino. And, and of course, living in California, I knew all the shortcuts, how to get the Portofino in and, and so forth. And uh, driving the car was easy uh, because uh, it was a van. Uh, it, it had a modified engine, 350, and uh, it had heavy duty suspension and, and uh, special Goodyear tires to support the weight and everything else. So. Uh, the, car, the vehicle was uh, great, uh, it performed well, and we just kept it on cruise control when uh, we swapped drivers and, and we never stopped the vehicle, we just kept going. And we got into uh, into California after taking a 20 gallon on a dump of fuel and uh, started, uh, we thought for sure we won the race. And we came around the corner at Portofino Inn and there was Dan Gurney and Brock Yates and they had beat us by 20 minutes. Well, we do have a uh, an all-time van record. Uh, the PRDA set that record in uh, 36 hours and 40 minutes uh, across the country, and uh, I think that can never be done again. And you know, though, uh, the, the sad thing is, there'll never be anything like the cannonball was. No, never. you know, and uh, the way that uh, you know legislation over the years has, has gone, but. Uh, you know the, the true form of the cannonball was just just a brilliant idea. You know to, to showcase the ingenuity. I mean to, to make a Chevy van go with really not really stopping. Well, that coast was, to coast. I yeah, mean, that's that's, that's, that that's is true. Genius. Who, who who would have thought that except the PRDA say that to be able to carry enough fuel? And when you see these 55 gallon drums strapped in to the uh, the van and then a uh, bunk on top of the the drums so that you could rest out. So we always had, um, you know, a driver going, and it was it was pretty easy to do. And of course, you have your DOA constitution you have to take care of. So we took care of that with the porta potty. So it was, 
you know, it was not a very sanitary situation, I'm sure. And, and of course, uh, carrying that much fuel uh, cross country today, uh, we would probably be considered to be some sort of a domestic terrorist, you know, uh, back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it, it's a great story. But, you know, uh, other than the cannibal, you've 